For the last 78 years, we've watched some of the greatest moments in NBA history. Chamberlain makes it 101 to 99. They set up their strategy. Watch the rebound. This is the thing that brought the house down. Five, the pressure shoots. Hit for three seconds to go. Two seconds, one second. West throws it up. He makes it. West throws it up and makes it. Five seconds to go. Matches with a hook shot. back and did it all over again. Today is the year 1948. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of NBA 2K History Resimulation here on NBA 2K25. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. If you are, hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Thank you guys for all of the support for episode one. And let's get into episode two here. The Washington Capitals trying to to a three-peat we'll see what happens but we've already made some changes so as we enter the 1948 season we are adding four new teams to the league one of them it's a one and done the other three are here to stay forever so as you can see we have the washington capitals we've got the boston celtics but the one and done team is the indianapolis jets now all the players that you see on the roster will actually become free agents so don't worry about that so we have the indianapolis jets uh obviously we have the new york knicks but we have added the minneapolis lakers again all those players that you see on the roster are actually free agents so it doesn't matter but the minneapolis lakers have entered the uh officially or no the baa i believe we become the nba in 1949 i'm pretty sure I, i'm pretty I'm like 99% sure that's the case. Uh, and then we've added the Fort Wayne Pistons. So the Pistons are now in the BAA. We've added the Rochester Royals. They are now in the BAA. We still got Chicago. We still got Providence. We still have the Philadelphia Warriors, St. Louis Bombers, and the Baltimore Bullets. So that's what the league looks like. And next season, though, gets a little crazy. Five teams get added into the league next offseason. It's going to be bonkers. So, as we enter the league meeting, just want to show you guys what I've changed. I'm changing the shot clock to 30 seconds. I think this will get us into that 70 to low 80 points per game range for every team. So, we're trying to do that. Uh, I'm also making it, so, making it so that the shot clock resets to full duration, as it did uh, in real life, I believe. I believe. Because they recently changed it to 14 seconds, um, like 10 years ago or something, or around there. Uh, we've eliminated zone defenses because I believe in real life they eliminated zone defenses around this time. Uh, we added hand checking because we didn't have that added, and uh, I'm just I'm trying to change up the the timeout system a little bit. So we'll see uh, how that goes. So that's what we've done. Now we enter the 1948 nba draft and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you guys who's in this draft we have uh, five players in this draft we've got dolph shays 
Harry Gallatin, Bobby Wanzer, Bill Gabber, and Alex Hanna. We now enter the 1948 NBA draft, and with the number one overall pick, the Baltimore Bullets, who had the worst record last year. Expansion teams do not have a pick. All right, they stay out because we only have five players. So the teams from last year, the, the worst teams from last year are, are going to get the picks instead of the expansion teams. Um, and plus, some of the expansion teams will just end up folding anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the Baltimore Bullets with the number one overall pick select Dolph Shays. So Dolph Shays heads to uh, Baltimore. Ironically, Baltimore will actually fold later on, so... Dolph Shays will not be in Baltimore forever. With the second overall pick, the Philadelphia Warriors select Harry Gallatin. That's a great pick for Philadelphia. And Joe Folks gets a really good teammate. That's, that's going to be interesting. With the third overall pick, the St. Louis Bombers select Bobby Wanzer. And with the fourth overall pick, the Chicago Stags will select Bill Gabber. And with the fifth overall pick, the Providence Steamrollers select Alex Hannum. So that is the NBA draft here in 1948. We'll go over it again here. Dolph Shays, 86 overall, heads to the Bullets. Harry Gallatin, 84 overall, heads to the Warriors. The Bombers select 80 overall, Bobby Wanzer. And the Stags select 76 overall, Bill Gabber. And the Steamrollers select 76 overall, Alex Hannum. On to free agency here, Chick Halbert, who was the first ever defensive player of the year. He heads to the Steamrollers, Bobby McDermott to the Knicks, uh, Freddie Lewis to uh, Boston, and John Mankin to the Steamrollers, Bob Carpenter to the Pistons, Bob Dole to the Lakers, uh, Chip Sobek to the Celtics, Hal Tidrick to uh, the New York Knicks. So again, look, free agency will be pretty quiet in this, you know, early on in this series, but uh, a couple of uh, big signings, especially the first ever defensive player of the year. The final BAA season is complete and George Mikan wins back to back regular season MVPs, averaging 21 points, 11 rebounds and three assists, one steal, 2.8 blocks, shooting 56% from the field. Uh, what a season for George Mike and Dolph Shays wins the last ever rookie of the year in the BAA 26 and 14. Good Lord. He dominated. Wow. I mean, he's probably the only good player on his team, but you know, uh, that is a hell of a season for Dolph Shays. Arnie Risen wins back to back six man of the year with the Washington Capitals. The Capitals are a juggernaut. Uh, George Mike also a defensive player of the year back to back once again. Bob Dole is your most improved with the Minneapolis Lakers. Carl Braun, clutch player of the year for, I believe, a second straight year. And coach of the year goes to the St. Louis Bombers. On to the All-NBA first team. We've got Carl Braun, Bobby Wanzer, Dolph Shays, Jim Pollard, and George Mikan. All-NBA second team, we got Andy Phillip, Max Zeslowski, Harry Gallatin, Joe Folks, and Connie Simmons. All-NBA third team, we got John Logan, Fred Scolari, Bob Dole, Bob Carpenter and Don Otten. All defensive first team. We got Carl Braun, Andy Phillip, Harry Gallatin, Dolph Shays, and George Mikan. All defensive second team. We got Bobby Wanzer, uh, Clyde Bell, Jim Pollard, Alex Hannum, and Harry Zeller. So, Dolph Shays did lead the league in scoring, averaging 26 points per game. He also led the league in rebounds with 14.7. A great year for Dolph Shays. Uh, Fred Scolari... With 5.9 assists, that led the league. Uh, two steals per game uh, led the league, uh, and that was Jim Pollard. And then George Mikan led the league in blocks per game with 2.8. By the way, the scoring is much better. Uh, so basically at this time, you guys can go look at it. It was basically around high 60s to low 80s. Uh, now, obviously, as you can see, there are some really bad scoring teams, but those are the... Um, the new teams, expansion teams, right? So I'm not really too worried about that. I'm more worried about, like, the teams that played last year, right, that actually have depth. Uh, and they're averaging, you know, low 70s, 80s. Uh, so that's good to see. Um, Boston led the league in scoring with 82.8 points per game. That's, like, right on the money. Uh, actually, I can see it right here. Let's see, 4950 points per game. The team that led the league in points per game that season was actually the... Oh, wow, was it the... 
Uh, oh, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong season. Hold on. Uh, 48-49 was... It was kind of a tie, but... Looks like the Stags, Minneapolis Lakers, Rochester Royals, they were all, they were all around 83-84. With the Warriors, Bullets, all around 83-84. So we're, we're right around there. So I think we're at a, a good spot with um, the shot clock. And then we'll move the shot clock to 24 seconds, obviously, when it, becomes, uh, when it becomes a thing. So let's move on to the playoffs. The St. Louis Bombers, the number one seed uh, in the Western Conference. Uh, led by John Logan, um, Stan Mizek as well. They'll be taking on the Fort Wayne Pistons, led by uh, Bob Carpenter. The Chicago Stags, led by Max Zeslovsky, uh, Frankie Bumholtz, uh, George Nashrand, uh, Bill Gabber, the rookie, uh, averaged 12 points, 4 rebounds. They will take on the Minneapolis Lakers with Bob Dole and Harry Zeller. In the East, we got the Washington Capitals, led by, obviously, George Mikan. But, I mean, this team and their depth is just insane. You got Arnie Risen, Fred Scolari, Bob Furyk. I, this this team, I mean, look at the bench. You got Sadowski. You got Bones McKinney. I mean, this, this team is so good. They're going to be playing Providence, led by Jim Pollard. Uh, and then they also have, they. I believe they drafted, yeah, they drafted Alex Hannum uh, last year or this past um, offseason, and obviously two years ago, drafted Jim Pollard. Pollard averaging 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. He's having a really good year. Uh, Philly will take on the Boston Celtics. Uh, Philly led by Harry Galton. And look, take a look at his, his rookie year. 15 points, 12 rebounds, 2 blocks per game. He had a solid rookie year. Joe Folks, the first ever BAA MVP. Uh, a down year, only averaged 13 points. He's 28 now, so... It looks like he's starting to kind of regress a little bit. Uh, but they, it looks like they have a pretty solid team. And they're taking on the Boston Celtics with Al Servi, uh, Carl Braun in his second year, averaging 21, 8, and 3. He's having a really good year. Uh, and then Connie Simmons, averaging 12 and 7. They have a pretty good team as well. The East is much, much better than the West. And obviously, I, I forgot to say this, but Washington... Um, moved to uh, the western conference and so did the baltimore bullets actually so they uh or they moved to the east so the west is really just kind of the new team uh the only teams that actually stayed in the west from last year were the stags and the st louis bombers and you can tell they're the top two seeds in the conference right they're the, the only two teams the other four teams in the western conference are actually expansion teams uh, the Capitals and Bullets moved to uh, the East, along with this, you know, and staying obviously where the Celtics, Knicks, Warriors, and uh, the Steamrollers. So, an interesting change to the NBA, and that's how it was in real life. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm following what it was in real life. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Obviously, the East much, much better than the West. But let's move on to the conference finals. The Boston Celtics do get swept. 2-0 uh, by the Philadelphia Warriors. The Minneapolis Lakers lose to the Stags. The Providence Steamrollers lose to uh, the two-time back-to-back defending champions. And the Fort Wayne Pistons are eliminated by the St. Louis Bombers. So we got the Bombers versus the Stags. And we got Washington versus Philly. Both the Bombers and the Washington Capitals sweep in the conference finals. And the Washington Capitals have a chance to win three straight BAA titles. That's insane. I mean, this team is just, they are dominant. Uh, as we look at the starting lineups here, we got John Logan, Bobby Wanzer, Al Breitman, Stan Mizek, and Ralph uh, Seward? Seward? I don't know. Uh, but the big story for St. Louis as they enter their first ever finals appearance is Bobby Wanzer. He's a rookie, and he is absolutely carrying the St. Louis Bombers, and then for Washington, they're just, they're like the Warriors with Steph, Clay, KD, and, and Draymond. Like, it's just, it's insane. You got Fred Scolari, uh, you got Furyk, you got Risen, you got Mike in. I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane as we enter the final BAA finals as the Washington Capitals do have home court advantage here. They have a six-point lead after one. A, what is that? Like 14-point lead at the half. And they just, they dominate. 98 to 75 
Fred Scolari with 17, 4, and 6. Furyk with 16, 4, and 3. Sadowski with 14, 4, and 3. Mikan with 14, and 8. Th their team is just so good. Bobby Windsor is doing everything he can. 26 points. I mean, he had a phenomenal rookie year. He's had a phenomenal finals, but the Washington Capitals are just stacked. Uh, they're just way too good. Uh, they lead by five after one here in game two. Lead by six at the half. Lead by 10 after three. And down to a minute to go. They're up by 13. That'll do it. The Washington Capitals take a 2-0 series lead. 81-62. to Mikan with 25, 15, and 4. Scolari with 20, 8, and 4. 13 and 6 for Arnie Risen. Bobby Wanzer with 14. Uh, a tough game for him. And the Capitals have taken a 2-0 series lead. On to game three. The Bombers with an early lead here. Lead by eight at the half. And now into the fourth quarter. It's going to be a close game. Let's get down to about two minutes here. Okay, we went a little farther. A minute and 25. Let's jump in. A minute 25 to go. The Bombers with the ball up by three. Trying to give Washington their first loss in the finals. Uh, they've, they've swept the last two years. It's just insane. Tough shot. Sadowski with great defense there. Gets the rebound. Gets it to uh, Schechtman. And Schechtman with the ball. Now 20 seconds on the shot clock. Scolari driving right. Tough shot. And it's up and good. Scolari makes it a one-point game. Just under a minute here. The Bombers really need a score here. They're going to get a screen into the post of Mogus. Mogus guarded by the big. And he'll kick it out. Smalley swings it to Brightman. Brightman now with five on the shot clock. Over to Smalley. Smalley has a lane. It gets fouled and one. Oh, what a play. And it gives the Bombers a three-point lead and a chance to extend it to four. Smalley's free throw is good. A four-point lead for the St. Louis Bombers. Trying to give Washington their first ever loss in the finals. What a play. So Washington with the timeout. 28 seconds to go. They need a quick bucket, and then they're going to have to foul. Over to Fierick. Fierick gives it to McKinney, gives it to Scolari. Scolari gets a screen. Probably want to get this to Mikan. They do. Mikan in the post now. Going right. Gets blocked! Mizek with the rebound. Gives it to Bobby Wanzer. And the St. Louis Bombers are going to win game three. Wanzer hits the first. And the second free throw, free throw from the rookie is good. A six-point lead for the St. Louis Bombers. Scolari will bring it up. Now, obviously, down 2-1 still in the series. Scolari, long two, no good, and that will do it. The St. Louis Bombers avoids going down 3-0. We might have a series here for the first time in this series. All right. Yeah, in this YouTube series. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Mizek had 20 points and 7 rebounds. Bobby with 16 and 5. Smalley had 16, 3 and 5. Logan with 12 and 8. Uh, Mike and, had a really good game again. 26 and 11. Scolari with 17, 4 and 5. But both of them had heavy turnovers and didn't get a lot of help. No one else had double figures in, uh, in points. But the Bombers make it a 2-1 series. On to St. Louis once again here for game number four. And the Bombers with a two-point lead after one. Now all tied up at the half. We enter the fourth quarter. The Bombers have a lead again. Going down to a minute and a half. They have a four-point lead. Can Washington make this a one-possession game here? They do. 69-67. Let's jump in. The Bombers with the ball. Mogus has it to Smalley. Swings it out to Brightman. And they'll hand it off to Logan. Logan with 20 on the shot clock, up by two, gets in the post to Mogus. Mogus, hook shot, is good! Over Sadowski! And the Bombers have a four-point lead. 40 seconds to go. Washington gives a screen, now to Mikan in the post. He's going to get doubled. Mikan swings it out to Sheckman. Sheckman will get a screen from Mikan. Sheckman 
We'll try to get it, Mike, and he does. And Mike and puts it up and good. 22 seconds to go. Big bucket there for George Mikan. They are going to have to foul. And they're going to need some missed free throws. Oh, it's stolen. Mikan comes up with the ball. They send it to Scalari. Scalari. No, he missed it. Oh, my gosh. Scalari tipped it. Mikan came up with the ball. But Scalari couldn't make the layup. Oh my. Logan will head to the free throw line. What an opportunity blown by Washington. And the Bombers have a great chance of tying up this series at two. I, I did not think they would even win one. Unbelievable. I mean, this Washington team is so good. They have so much more talent. But the St. Louis Bombers have played incredible here in these finals. And specifically at home, Scolari is going to have to go quick here. Long two is no good. And that will do it. The Bombers will tie up this series. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. We head to game five, back to Washington. And look at the scoring from the Bombers. Smalley with 12, Mizek with 12, Wanzer with 12, Logan with 11, 10 for Mogus. Just so impressive. Mikan with 20, 15, and 6 had 4 blocks, but 8 of 18 from the field. Scolari, 17 points, but 8 of 20 from the field. They just didn't get enough from, I mean, from their two best players, right? They weren't efficient. And obviously, when they were not efficient, the Bombers have just a bunch of guys chipping in. The Bombers are going to have a chance. So we had to game five. The Capitals now at home trying to take back control of this series. But the Bombers, I mean, my goodness, they are playing so well. But Washington in a big third quarter. Now into the fourth. They're up by three. Let's get down to about two minutes here to see if this game is close enough to jump in. But Washington trying to pull away. They're up by seven, up by eight, up by ten. And that will do it. The Washington Capitals win game number five a very high scoring game 110 to 99. Mikan with 23 and 5. Checkman with 12. I mean just much better scoring from from the others. So I mean that's a big difference there. Bobby Wanzer at 35, 5 and 5 though. Bobby Wanzer is gonna be a problem. He's gonna be really really good but the Washington Capitals have taken a 3-2 series lead. We head back to St. Louis. The Bombers up by two after one, but now down by nine at the half. The Washington Capitals with full control here as we get down to a minute and a half, and that's going to do it. The Capitals will three-peat. The Washington Capitals win three straight BAA titles. George Mikan is your finals MVP in back-to-back -back seasons. 23, 10, and 3. Two blocks per game. Shot 56% from the field. As the Washington Capitals have created a dynasty. I mean, it's it's all because George Mikan went to the team who won a title in year one. Like, that is just so crazy that he went there. And, like, it makes sense, right? The best player in the NBL goes to the BAA as basically a free agent. And he goes to the best team. I mean, it makes sense, right? Uh, but man, just absolutely insane. And they got Arnie Risen. I mean, the team is absolutely insane. What a run for the Bombers, though. I mean, they they played great. Game six, Bobby Wins are 22. Smalley with 19. Like, they have a really good team. They're another player away from actually being able to really contend. But Bobby Wins is going to get better. And George Mikan, I mean, he's only 24. I, he's he's going to be so good. He's going to be so, uh, so good. Um, and he's going to be tough to beat. And, you know, with them having Arnie Risen as well, Scolari, I, it's just, it's going to be tough to beat this team. We are on to the 1949 offseason. And we've got a lot of changes. So we have expanded the team to 17 teams in now officially 
the NBA. The BAA and the NBL has officially merged. And so that's why there's a big expansion to 17 teams. However, this is the last time we're going to be over 10 teams in a long, long time after the think about this after the season six teams fold and we go back to 11 teams and then another team folds and we go down to eventually we get down to eight teams by 1953 it's kind of crazy um that it goes backwards that much uh but this is really gonna expand the amount of talent as far as like it's gonna spread everyone out so it's gonna be really weird and the washington capitals in the next episode fold which is also going to be really interesting to see where what happens to that team because that's going to completely change everything right uh so that's going to be approved or that was approved and then we actually changed the number of fouls to six it was at five that actually should have happened uh last season i think but uh we went ahead and it did that uh, and then here is the league realignment so we have the sheboygan redskins we have the Waterloo Hawks, the Rochester Royals, the Minneapolis Lakers, the Anderson Packers, uh, the Philadelphia Warriors, the Tri-Cities Blackhawks, the Indianapolis Olympians. We've got the Denver Nuggets, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, which obviously they disband after this season. Chicago Stags, the Boston Celtics, uh, the St. Louis Bombers, the New York Knicks, the Washington Capitals, the Baltimore Bullets, the Syracuse Nationals, and the Fort Wayne Pistons. So right now, there are, let's see, 9, 10, 11, 12 teams in this league uh, that stay forever, I think. Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8 teams, sorry, 8 teams. Not What did I say, 12? 8 teams uh, that, you know, stay forever. That's obviously... The Royals, who become the Kings, Minneapolis, who becomes LA Lakers, the Philadelphia Warriors, which become the Golden State Warriors, the Tri-City Blackhawks, which become the St. Louis Hawks, or not St. Louis, well, eventually St. Louis, but Atlanta Hawks, uh, and then we've got the Boston Celtics, the New York Knicks, uh, the Syracuse Nationals, and the Fort Wayne Pistons, so kind of crazy, uh, but yeah, that's what the league looks like right now. So with an expansion, there is an expansion draft. So let's get into the expansion draft. There's going to be, oh my God, they didn't save Dolph Shays. What? Dolph Shays is headed to the Olympians. McKinney goes to the Blackhawks. Logan goes to the Packers. Fury goes to the Nationals. Smalley goes to the Nuggets. Calverly goes to the Nuggets. Wow. Gabber goes to the Packers wow okay Dolph Shays is going to be on the Olympians what a pick for the Olympians that's insane wow okay so some obvious big changes we'll see how that changes up the league but and then not only that but the Olympians um they fold in 1953, I believe. So they're going to be around for a while. So we'll see what happens with Dolph Shays in Indianapolis. With the first overall pick in the first ever NBA draft, the Rochester Royals select Vern Mickelson. So Vern Mickelson headed to the Royals with the number two overall pick. The Sheboygan Redskins, who are listed as number two. I let just the thing to handle this so um oh you know what it's because i actually moved them um because i couldn't actually expand oh that's all right uh but they select jack coleman with a number three oh it's gonna be a little complicated uh but it's all right fred shaws goes to the baltimore bullets the new york knicks with the fourth overall pick select leo barnhorst with the fifth overall pick the fort wayne pistons select slater martin that's a good pickup for Fort Wayne with the sixth overall pick Dick McGuire gets picked up by the Minneapolis Lakers and with the last pick the Boston Celtics select Bob Harrison on to a free agency and Connie Simmons leaves the Celtics and he is headed to New York Al Servi leaves Boston and goes to the Nationals Kenny Saylor stays in Boston Mizek stays with the Bombers uh, Don Otten leaves New York and he goes to Boston. 
Uh, Howie Dahmer, he heads to the Lakers. Mokas uh, returns to the St. Louis Bombers. So an interesting free agency. But uh, yeah, in a 17-team league now, I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see like how the scoring is impacted and everything. Like it's it's gonna be weird because we went from what nine or no, we went from 11, I think. Let's see, three, six, nine, 12. Oh, actually, we went from 12 to 17, and then we're gonna go from 17 to 11. So kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. The first ever NBA MVP is George Mikan. 21 points, 11.7 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 2.5 blocks, 1 steal, shooting 53% from the field on the Washington Capitals. George Mikan continues his dominance. That's technically three straight MVPs, but obviously the first two were BAA MVPs. Now he wins his first NBA MVP. Rookie of the year is Vern Mickelson, 23-10 per game, having a really good first year. Sixth man of the year is Hank Beenders. Not a lot of depth in the league right now because obviously we have 17 teams. Dolph Shays, averaging 28-14, two blocks, wins defensive player of the year. And then Noble Jorgensen, 9 points, 13 rebounds. He's your most improved. Vern Mickelson is your clutch player of the year, and the Capitals won 71 games. All NBA first team, Bill Gabbard, Bobby Wanzer with the St. Louis Bombers, 27 and 9 uh, and 4 rebounds. Pretty good year. Dolph Shays, Harry Gallatin, his second year averaging, averaging 17 and 13. And then George Mikan. All NBA second team, got Carl Braun, Andy Phillip, Vern Mickelson, Jack Coleman, and Norm Frazier. Uh, that might just be a random player that snuck in there, un unfortunately. Uh, all NBA third team, Al Servi. Uh, Smalley, Jim Pollard, Fred Shaws, and Noble Jorgensen. Oh, man. He's, yeah. He, uh, you know what? He actually might be real. I, have, I, I, don't, I don't know. Some, some Certain players, I have no idea. Uh, all defensive first team, we got Bill Gabber, Bobby Wanzer, Dolph Shays, Harry Gallatin, and George Mikan. All defensive second team, we got Carl Braun, Andy Phillip, uh, Pop Goodwin, Vern Mickelson, and Norm Frazier. Dolph Shays led the league in scoring, averaging 28.4 per game. Bobby Anzer was second, Gabber was third, and Mickelson was fourth. Braun was fifth in scoring. Dolph Shays did lead the league in rebounds per game as well. Al Servi led the league in assists, up to 7.1 now. Uh, and then Bobby Anzer led the league in steals with 2.4. George Mikan once again led the league in blocks with 2.5. And now it's a much bigger... NBA playoffs, which is kind of crazy. Um, okay, then. The Warriors do have the number one seed uh, with Bob. Did, did almost everybody make the playoffs? Yeah, except one team did not. <laughs> why, why is it eight? Why is it like that? Every Eastern Conference team made the playoffs. Um, that's hilarious. And then the only, of course, the only team in the West that didn't make the playoffs was Denver. I'm just going to simulate through for the first round. It doesn't really matter um, unless there was upsets. I guess we'll find out. Oh, my God, there was. Rochester just beat, um, I don't I don't remember. Is that the, gosh, I, I don't know that logo. That's a new team. Is that the... I have no... Oh, no. That's the Anderson Packers. I have no... I have no idea who that is. <laughs> I have no idea. I This 17-team thing is just wild. Um, That is the... Oh, yeah. It is the Anderson Packers. Okay. The Anderson Packers, who won 52 games, just lost in round one, technically. Okay. Bill Gabber gets eliminated. Um, Only averaged three points. Ooh, did he get hurt? Is that why? No, it doesn't doesn't look like I don't know. I don't I have I have no idea what just happened. Okay, well, on to uh, round 2 technically. We got the Warriors with Harry Gallatin and Joe Folks taking on the Sheboygan Redskins who have Jack Coleman. Interesting. We've got the Waterloo Hawks with Chick Halbert, Alex Hannum, Jim Pollard um versus 
the uh, Rochester Royals, who have Vern Mickelson uh, and Torgoff. And then we have the Washington Capitals with George Mikan, Arnie Risen, uh, Bob Mullins, Fred Scolari, Ed Sadowski. Just such a good team. They're taking on the St. Louis Bombers. Uh, these two teams faced off in the NBA Finals a year ago. Now they're in the same conference. Uh, so Bobby Wanzer, uh, Semenov, Mizek, Mogus, and Ralph Seward with Red Roca coming off the bench and barely playing. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the New York Knicks with Andy Phillip, Bobby McDermott, Leo Barnhorst, Bud Palmer, Connie Simmons. That's actually a really good team. They're taking on the Celtics with Kenny Sailors, Carl Braun, George Nostrand, Don Otten. All right. Well, let's see who gets to the conference finals. The Knicks are eliminated. Sheboygan gets eliminated. St. Louis gets eliminated. The Royals get eliminated. So it's between the Philadelphia Warriors and the Waterloo Hawks and the Washington Capitals versus the Boston Celtics who upset the New York Knicks. The Philadelphia Warriors beat the Waterloo Hawks 2-1. Uh, to one. And Washington sweeps Boston. So, here's our finals. The Philadelphia Warriors versus the Washington Capitals. Bob Davies, Jerry Fleshman, Tony Jeros, Harry Gallatin, and Joe Folks is your starting lineup in Philly. And for Washington, it's Fred Scolari, Mel Rabe, Cedric Palmer, Arnie Risen, and George Mikan. But the Philadelphia Warriors in the finals for the first time in their franchise history. The Capitals in a fourth straight trying to win a fourth straight. So let's head to game one in Washington. And after one, the Capitals up by one. After two, they're down by three. Down by six and going into the fourth quarter. We're trying to come back here. And down to a minute 28. It's a one-point game here in game one. Let's jump in. A minute and a half to go. Sineski gets it to Folks, the first ever MVP. Folks puts it up. No good. He missed it. Tough shot. Sadowski with the rebound. Washington down by one. They can take a lead with the buck with the bucket. Scalari in the post to Risen. Risen. Pump fake. Will swing it to Scalari or kick it out to Scalari. Scalari back in the post to Risen. Risen. In the post. And he's going to have to take a tough shot. No good. Great defense by Harry Gallatin. Up ahead to Davies. Nice pass to Folks. Folks lays it up and in. Philly has taken a three-point lead with 49 seconds to go. Here in Washington. 45 seconds. Risen in the post again. Gallatin, great defense. Risen spins right, gets fouled. So he will head to the free throw line. And the first ugly ass free throw is up and good. George Mikan comes back into the game. And Risen makes the second. And it's back to a one point game. They don't have to foul. 10 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Philly passes up ahead to Davies. Davies will hold on to it, gets a screen. 20 seconds to go on the shot clock in the post of Folks. Folks guarded by Mikan. Puts it up. No good. Great defense by Mikan. Good help defense. By I believe that was Risen. 25 seconds to go. And the Capitals have the ball down one. Can they take a 1-0 series lead at home? Here we go. Ball into Mikan in the post. Mikan. Good. The MVP. Gives Washington a one-point lead. 17 seconds to go. Uh, they went quick. I'm kind of surprised they didn't hold the ball. So now Philly has a chance to take a lead. Who do they go to in the clutch? Davies with it. 14 on the clock. Davies at the top of the key. 10 seconds to go. Davies to the right. Trying to get into the post. He does to Folks. Folks, three on the clock. Two guarded by Mikan. No good. Mikan with the rebound. And Washington wins game one. What a first game of the first ever NBA Finals. 
Washington wins it 81-80. George Mikan with the game winner. Wow. What a game. George Mikan, 26, 13, and 7, and 6 blocks. 20 points for Risen. Uh, Davies had 16. Fleishman had 13. Gallatin with 12 and 17. What a game number one. On to game two, once again in Washington, but the Warriors with a seven point lead after one, a, what is that? 15 point lead at the half, but here come the Capitals. They're trying to come back here, but oh man, war, the Warriors are holding on. But like I said, here come the Capitals. They tie it up. Oops, down to a minute and a half. We're all tied up at 74. Let's jump in. Scolari is at the free throw line here. And he hits the first free throw. Now a second is good. So Washington takes a two-point lead with a minute and a half to go. Philly will bring up the ball. Down by two. They get it into the post to Folks, guarded by Mikan. Folks puts it up, gets blocked! Gets his own rebound, Folks. A great defense by George Mikan. What are they doing? Pass the ball, Folks. Puts it up, gets blocked again! George Mikan! Are you kidding me? I'm not sure what Folks is doing there. Scolari now with it. Scolari does not give it to Mikan in the post. He wanted it. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now they get it to Mikan. 8 seconds. Mikan drives left on Gallatin. Or Folks, maybe. Mikan in the post gets doubled! Splits the double! Oh, he can't make it! Tough shot. 40 seconds to go. Philly down by two. Driving left and he's fouled. Palmer with the foul. That's an auto generated player. Not sure why he's in there, unfortunately. I got to go through and, and get rid of those guys. Jaros to the free throw line. The first is up and no good. A big missed free throw. After this video, before the next video, I'll make sure I go through and try to get rid of the auto generated players. Second free throw is up and good. I don't, I'm not sure how they got good. I, I don't know what happened there. So here we go. Brevi over to Scolari. Up by one. 30 seconds go. About a five second differential between shot clock and game clock. So Scolari will hold on to it. Up by one. Now down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Scolari. Probably wants it in the post to Mike, and he does. Mike can hook shot. Good. A three-point lead for Washington. George Mike is just unstoppable. He is absolutely dominating this game and this series. Philly will pass it in down by three. No three-point shot. Remember, well, they will take a long two. That's no good. Mike in with the rebound gets it to Scolari. And that will do it. The Washington Capitals will take a 2-0 series lead. Mike in with another dominant game. 21, 19, and 7. And 7 blocks. Oh my goodness. Scolari with 15 and 7. Sadowski with 10. Gallatin had a really good game, but not good enough. 26, 10, 2 assists, 3 steals, 4 blocks. He had a great game. But the Capitals take a 2-0 series lead. Now... We move on to game number three in Philly, but it's the Capitals dominating the first quarter. And into the fourth, they're up by 13. Down to 58 seconds. Yeah, up by over 20. They win 84 to 61. George Mikan with 28, 10, and 4. Scolari with 15, 5, and 6. Risen with 14 and 13. Folks with 15 and 10. And the Washington Capitals have taken a 3-0 series lead. On to game number four. They're up by nine after one, up by eight at the half, up by 15 going into the fourth, and now down to a minute 42. Yeah, they're up by 14. The Washington Capitals are going to win a fourth straight title. And that will do it. The Washington Capitals have just won a fourth straight title. The first ever NBA title. Unbelievable. Four straight. 
Wow. Wow. I mean, just what a dominant team. Starting off this series with this dominant of a team is just insane. It's absolutely insane. It really does kind of suck that it's a team that folds. Like, that's what I was kind of worried about with doing this where, you know, certain teams fold and whatnot. Is that they could end up being really good, right? But, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to... I thought about keeping them in the league, but I, I want to keep it how it was in, in real life. And to be fair, as we see George Mikan winning a third straight finals MVP... A lot of teams folded because of financial reasons, right? So, folks with 17, 6, and 4, Gallatin with 11 and 8. The Capitals, uh, Arnie Risen at 16 and 12, Mikan with 16 and 13, 3 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks. Didn't shoot well in the closeout game, but he still wins finals MVP as the Washington Capitals uh, win the title. George Mikan, 22.7 points per game, 13.8 rebounds. Five assists, four blocks per game. Just absolutely dominant. Uh, but like I was saying, the Washington Capital Capitals do fold. And I could... Let me look real quick to see why they folded. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't say why they folded. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below. Um, a lot of times when teams fold, it's financial reasons. Um, so like, I don't really want to keep them in the league because then it gets confusing. I already have like a spreadsheet of who folds when and who's added when. And so I, I don't want to make it confusing for myself. And even if they win, if they're not doing well financially, and maybe they would have done financially well if they won, but they did actually appear in the finals, I think once. So, like, they were winning. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when they folded, they had a 10-25 and 25 record. So, but I, for the most part, I think it's just, it's financial reasons. Um, they lost the BAA championship in 1949. Um, they lost in the Eastern Division semifinals in 1950. So, like, they won quite a bit. The year that they folded, they missed the playoffs. But, like, yeah, it's just, I think it's just a lot of fun. I mean, they were successful. You know, they didn't win a championship, but they were making the playoffs every year, except for the year they folded. So, it's just how it is. Um, like I said, it doesn't say why they folded. But, you know, sometimes it's just financial reasons, right? I, I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. Um, like I said, it doesn't really say. It just it just pairs them. Uh, let's see. The Capitals were founded in 1946 as a charter BAA team. It became a charter NBA team in 1949. It was one of seven teams that quickly left the NBA. The NBA contracted after the 49-50 season, which is the season that we're in, losing six teams, the Packers, the Redskins, the Waterloo Hawks. Uh, those teams went to the NPBL, while the Chicago Stags, Denver Nuggets, and St. Louis Bombers completely folded. The league went from 17 to 11 teams before the 50-51 season uh, started. And then midway through the 50-51 season, the Washington Capitals folded as well, bringing the number of teams in the league down to 10. The team was coached by Red Arbach. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Earl Lloyd was the first African-American athlete to play for an NBA team, and he debuted with the Capitals. That's cool. Uh, the franchise played the 51-52 season. In the american basketball league but the team folded again in 52 so they tried but it just didn't work um and then obviously the nba went back to washington in 73 so i it doesn't say why i'm assuming it's financial reasons that's probably the reason why most teams folded back then the nba wasn't financially successful right until magic and bird um so that's just how it goes um, it's crazy in our era or world because they've won four straight titles. So it makes it a little, not complicated, but maybe what we'll do is cause they've talked about how, if Seattle gets a team, Oklahoma city will give the Seattle history back to Seattle. So that's what we're going to do. I just actually thought of that. Um, that's actually a really good idea. So 
when Washington, when the, when we get back to Washington as the Washington Bullets, they will recover their history. Okay, I think I think that's a fair deal. Um, so Washington starting off with four titles, not bad. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you guys want. Uh, if if you guys are new to the channel, and that right next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. If you guys hit that join button, you guys get uh, a little uh, badge next to your name. Uh, and what's cool about that is as you're subscribed long term to the channel, I've actually put in uh, the basketballs of like NBA history. So when you start and when you're first of, of the, your first like however months of being a member, you have the original basketball uh, in the BAA. And then it just goes from that to you know, nine different types of basketball. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then not only that, but this series you get to see one day before everybody else. And uh, you guys, you get to see the, the conference finals, um, the jump-ins in the conference finals and, and all of that. So I think it's a pretty cool deal. Um, if you guys are a member and you guys, or if you're not, and you feel like there's something that I could add to that, uh, for you to make it, you know, worth it to spend the $10. Let's say you want something specifically. Let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm more than happy to go through it and, uh, and add stuff for members. Um, like I said, I've never done this before. So I want to hear your guys' feedback on that. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the year 1950.